You don't even like sports. Welcome to You Don't Even Like Sports, a podcast about sports for people who don't like sports. With your hosts, Adam Todd Brown and Jeff May. Hey, everybody. You don't even like sports. You don't even like sports. Why are you, for one thing, what are sports? What's your fucking deal? Do sports even exist anymore? You know what you do like? What? What's that? You do like you don't even like sports. You do like the podcast, You Don't Even Like Sports. I really do. And I'm stoked, by the way, about the reception of this podcast. Oh, yeah. I'm stoked about that. There's a lot of things sports related that a person could not be stoked about right now. We're we're about to be, just by the nature of this podcast, uh, we're about to be the only sports game in town. Yeah, everybody else is shut down. Yeah, all you sports news podcasts, what do you got to talk about now? I mean, yeah, shout out to uh, all the Kingsmen podcast. I think they might just about take a hit. Yeah, a lot of like sports entertainment, like ESPN has been nothing but coronavirus stuff since last night as we record this. Well, luckily, I, I feel like our show's about somebody who might be an expert in viruses. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Dennis Rodman probably has immunity to all of them. Yeah. But yeah, this is, we're going to, we're going to keep the network going. Yeah. We're just going to have to. Skeleton crew. Yeah, it's going to be a skeleton crew. We're going to record a lot of stuff remote. Y'all can't see this in here, but Adam and I are 30 feet away from each other. We do have some distance between us. It looks like when uh, Bruce Wayne and Vicki Vale are having their first date and they're across the huge, <laughs> the huge dining room table. I sprayed down all the microphones with disinfectant. It smells great. Yeah, it smells better than it did when I recorded yesterday. I think I overdid it. Did you it disinfect first. after the other people recorded? Yes. Okay. Oh, I did. see, I like that. Yeah, and then I wiped down all of the fucking microphone stands, and I'm going to do it again after we record today, and then shutting this studio down for a couple weeks. Don't worry. I'm still going to be recording stuff. We've got it figured out. We have a plan. We're going to do some stuff via phone in a lot of cases, but I've already talked to people. We have we have a continuation of government plan yeah. in place. Yeah. Your audio will be crystal clear, I'm sure. Yeah. We might drop to like five episodes a week as opposed to like eight to ten episodes a week. Yeah. Hopefully you'll be okay. Hopefully we'll be okay. Also, tell your friends about fucking Patreons. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we uh, we're all taking f- massive financial hits right it's now. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough times, and uh, we would if uh, appreciate it if you stick with us. We will uh, continue putting out content for that ass, <laughs> even if we have to do it from separate rooms for the next six months. Here's the thing about technology: we've reached that point. We can do it, man. It's- I'm gonna have Alex on a podcast next week, and he's in fucking North Carolina. Hell yeah, dude! The future is here, baby. So. With that in mind, let's carry on. Let's talk about San Antonio. With our exploration yeah. of Dennis Rodman's life and career. When we left off, he had uh, just attempted suicide. Allegedly. Cliffhanger. And he had also been or was well on his way to being traded to the San Antonio Spurs because his time in Detroit was becoming a problem. Yeah. I mean, he... He, I think, was indicative of that bad. I mean, everybody, when they look at like the bad boy era, they think primarily Lambeer and then its effect on Isaiah Thomas. That tends to be the thing that yeah. when people look back, that's what they think about. Dennis, because Dennis Rodman came in not immediately into that era, but he really does personify the era. Right. Yeah. And he he brought all of that with him to the Spurs. Oh, he sure did. Which uh, eventually becomes a problem. Well, he brought all that and more with him to this like oh yeah he arrived at the spurs as a completely new man he was a team of bad boys in one bad boy (laughs) but before we get into his time with the spurs i want to talk about the suicide attempt a little bit more because in the lead up to the release of the dennis rodman 30 for 30 which just came out i believe it was earlier this year if not okay or at at worst it was late last year But in the lead up to that 30 for 30, he gave a bunch of interviews. And one of the interviews was with Bleacher Report. And he talked about that suicide attempt. And this time he says, one, that there was 
also a suicide note that he wrote. Yeah. That's interesting. If he's not misremembering it, yes. Yeah, because that, I, I clearly, I, I really do not remember a note being mentioned in anything we researched for the last episode. But beyond that, too, like, time creates memory shifts. Yeah. Like, no memory stays intact. As much as we like to pretend and think that they do, they don't. They change after years. So, like, who knows? Yeah. He also, he mentions that the reason for it, if that if there indeed was a suicide attempt or at least, you know, the thought of committing suicide, he says the reason for that was the disintegration of that bad boy's team that he was a part of. And that, I believe yeah like he he clearly took that very hard yeah as we've seen he sort of is is sort of reactive to his external circumstances yeah this is a quote from the bleacher report interview when things started to disassemble i started to feel betrayed i said what the fuck's going on i was so enamored of the way they loved me and being embraced by the people in detroit so once a lot of the people that loved me were gone and chuck daly was gone i was all by myself I had nobody to turn to. Oh, wait. Oh, that's gonna get Dennis. Some, that's gonna get some comments from for us. <laughs> it's fine. So what's gonna what's gonna save him, Adam? You know, this also got left out of all early versions of this story that I've read. But as it turns out, his life was saved by the magic of the band Pearl Jam. I'm gonna save a player when he's gonna kill himself. Yeah, yeah, Rodman's got the head gun again. Yeah, <laughs> I do remember Dennis Rodman very publicly being a big Pearl Jam fan. I remember that because I was such a Bulls fan and I was exposed to a whole lot of Dennis Rodman, and uh, he talked about it a lot. But he says in this interview. So one day I wrote a note and went to the parking lot of the palace. I had a gun rack and I had a gun in my car. I had it in my hand, but for some reason I played this music. I put it on and I was listening to this song and this music and I was just debating. It didn't have anything to do with basketball. It had to do with this love that I wanted and it suddenly just left me. And this song came on. It was Pearl Jam, Even Flow and Black and stuff like that. And I had the gun in my lap. And next thing you know, I fell asleep listening to Pearl Jam. Don't we all? <laughs> I was like, Pearl Jam, boring enough to save a life. <laughs> exactly. Then I woke up and all the cops and everyone was there. Man, so Eddie Vedder saved Dennis Rodman. If Rodman's he was a Soundgarden life. fan, he would have been amped up to kill himself. <laughs> Hell yeah. Soundgarden took no fucking prisoners. Shotgun. Yeah. There would have been no kill me. Oh, what was everything? <laughs> That's going to put you down, but fuck yeah. It. Yeah, and that was, that was like pre-Black Hole Sun and shit I'm like gonna that. I'm going to put this out there. Soundgarden, the most underrated and best of those bands to come out of there. Chris Cornell is by far the greatest singer to come out of Seattle. Yeah, he's he's the greatest singer. Uh, yeah, I mean, Soundgarden was solid. They just made... They made alt metal instead of alt rock and that's why i think i think it yeah didn't pick up the same way no, i mean they did pretty well they did okay they didn't get pearl jam and and uh nirvana numbers no well that that one album did but anyway yeah uh, they, they got by off of a off of a weird video because black hole sun's a dog shit song but the video is phenomenally weird yeah mtv made that happen black hole sun's not that bad i can't stand it you know who i bet love that song dennis rodman dennis rodman you know why that's a pearl jam ass sound garden yeah song. it's a song that'll put you to sleep when you got a yeah. gun in your hand i got going black hole sun that's like the highest point of yeah. it yeah yeah your baby sleeping in the other room oh wait different podcast <laughs> there man the we're parallels. gonna hit on two Two big, pretty big yeah. parallels in this episode. Which are shady, uncorroborated suicide attempts. And fucking Madonna. And get busting a nut inside Madonna. Yes. Wow. I mean, it's not. Maybe the next season of this episode or this podcast should be about Madonna. Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't even fuck Madonna. <laughs> not not for nothing, but what a, what a series of highs and lows. To experience is, is suicidal ideation and fucking Madonna. 
Yeah, all all in the same like eighteen yeah. month span. We need to check on Guy Ritchie because I guarantee you, Vanilla Ice has a similar story. <laughs> oh yeah, Vanilla Ice. I wonder what Big Daddy Kane has right. to say. Remember him? What's up, Kane? What's up, Kane? Uh, I was such a big Big Daddy Kane fan in the late eighties, early nineties. He was dope. So back to Dennis Rodman. He has put a new spin on the suicide story since. It first came out, I guess, in Bad As I Want to Be. Yeah, he's like, here it is. Saved by the Vetter. So after his relationship with Detroit deteriorates, he's traded to the San Antonio Spurs. Not a bad team to wind up on. No. All things considered, they are a perennial contender. They are one of my least favorite teams in basketball history. They are a team that plays basketball the way basketball was played before black people were allowed to play. Right. They are fundamentally sound. And somehow it wins them lots and lots of games. Fundamentals win games. Yeah. Like you can't get past that. Like flashiness notwithstanding, a good chest pass will really, you know, like really like like inside jump shots. And layups instead of dunks. And we're talking about a Spurs team that was led by David Robinson, who's a military guy. The Admiral. Yeah. Very straight laced, very religious, very conservative. What what the and people of Texas team, refer to as one of the good ones. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh and his team reflected that. Like the Spurs kind of are and like even when you think about the spurs going forward and i know we're getting a little too sportsy here for people maybe but he he gets like replaced or his his uh heir apparent is tim duncan another boring fucking dude boring people that win games that's the best way to describe anybody that plays for the spurs there's a reason to like the spurs and that's because they are very reliable or you're from san antonio yeah then yeah, you're but, kind of saddled but with there, it. There's no flash to it. But they've made some of the greatest teams of all time have been Spurs teams. Right. Like, and there's a reason that they were like, oh, they're in the finals again. I forgot they existed. Yeah, they just won. If I'm not mistaken, they just won a championship like two years not ago. Too, not too long ago, yeah. With Kawhi Leonard. You just forget about it. Yeah. Yeah, they're that kind of team. And yeah. Dennis Rodman gets dropped into the middle of that. And that oof, boy. before the 93, 94 season, it's very much like you ever see the movie son-in-law with Polly Shore where he goes back to, the Oh farm? yeah, it's yeah. that. Yeah. Kind of. It's just, it's just some Hollywoody kind of weirdo showing up to a very conservative, like now I'm not so sure about that. Yeah. And keep in mind, this is like after that suicide attempt, Dennis Rodman claims, well, that was me killing the old me. And becoming the me I was always meant to be. And he brings that energy the day he's introduced as a San Antonio Spur. At the San Antonio Spurs Fan Appreciation Day in 1993, he uh, he's introduced and he says, you can like me or you can hate me. All I know is one thing. When I step on this floor, I'm going to get things popping. And then he takes off his hat to reveal a blonde mohawk. I wonder how the good folks of San Antonio reacted if they hooted and hollered and whooped or if they were like, all right. Yeah, I'm sure there were. I wonder if we can get like a video. Well, I'll, I'll look into finding a video of that. Yeah, I'm sure there were cheers. Well, he's he's one of those guys that kind of like he adds spice to a very bland meal. Right. You know, and that becomes that's the start of him constantly dying his hair it's gonna sell jerseys too man oh yeah that's the other thing too is branding out there like yeah and he brought something to the spurs that they didn't really have which was like he brought that detroit pistons bad boy energy to the spurs he sure did and then in return they kind of acted like he was an asshole for it which why did you not know what you were buying yeah it's dennis rodman he just spent the last two years beating the shit out of scotty pippen in public Yeah, it's every like, chance he got. Like you bought an old Mustang, it's gonna have old Mustang problems. <laughs> you know, if you know what you're getting, like, there's no way they were like, we weren't expecting this from Dennis Rodman, the guy that attempted to murder Scottie Pippen in front of forty thousand people. I wonder if they thought once he got under the leadership of David Robinson that 
it would turn things around. When you poison the well, the water doesn't fix the poison. It's the other way around. He uh, he credits the the hair stuff to a chance encounter with a fan. He was at a mall in San Antonio. Like you do. And a fan who he described as at least 6'8", 250 pounds with mad hair. Uh a hairdresser yes this fan and this and all fan, they said was six eight he stood <laughs> and people thought the hair that he cut was good it was montel jordan <laughs> it uh he describes this fan as six eight 250 pounds hairdresser they convince him to get his hair dyed and yeah. the rest is history here's my question is 250 pounds big if you're six eight i am uh no i'm gonna say not really because six eight like Height adds a lot of weight. It's a lot right. of gravity put on there. And uh, I think he's not understanding that. But also, he's a big dude. Yeah, Dennis Rodman's pretty big himself. So he should know that. I mean, I'm guessing lean and muscular, but like, yeah. it's not particularly like. It doesn't seem that big to me. Like, if you somebody see somebody in the NBA who's got like big muscles, they're 6'8, 275. Right. Like, Zion Williamson is bigger than 200. He's more than 250. Yeah, he's a pounds. big dude. He's a big dude. He's a big boy. He's a big boy. So whatever the case, his first season with the Spurs, a rousing success. Great numbs, bro. Things go really well. He averages 7.6 points per game, 16.8 rebounds per game, all defensive team selection, third rebounding title. That's what you paid for, and that's exactly what you got. Speaking of getting exactly what you paid for, one of his standout performances that season he puts up an insane stat line, which is zero points, 28 rebounds. That harkens back to the last episode where right. we talk about how he is he is not selfish with the ball. Like a lot of guys try to be like he's flashy sort of off the court a little bit, a little bit, but yeah. he's not he's not greedy as a player. Oh, definitely. Like not. He's not he's not he's getting the ball and you know what you're getting at. And the thing about San Antonio where they need to calm the fuck down, or they should have at least, is his existence on the team did not prevent ticket sales whatsoever. It only created... Oh, of course not. Like, nobody's going to be like, well, I don't know about that Dennis Rodman. He's the devil. Yeah. I ain't going. Well... That's not... We do find out some people literally call him the devil, but... I mean... They're within the organization, not the fans. Yeah. Which, they're probably not wrong either. Yeah, and here's the thing. Texas isn't all one thing like not everyone in texas is is a racist piece of shit so like he was embraced by the spurs fans embracists (laughs) that means they're racist until you can win games for them yeah exactly yeah that's that's a pretty accurate depiction of a lot of racists i knew growing up can i copyright that term i think we should yeah embracists there's nothing else happening in sports right now we might as well interject some new lingo into the game yeah man that's a yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> Man. Right. I down. come from a town of embracists. <laughs> yeah, that that definitely that's very much a thing. That was like right off the cuff too. What the fuck? And uh he presumably had lots of those in San Antonio. But uh it's during his time with the Spurs where he forms one of his most enduring friendships. Uh it's actually a, a pretty sweet story. Right? He uh Like, his time with the Spurs eventually devolves into chaos, but when he first gets there, uh, he meets a guy named Jack Haley. Now, Jack Haley is, he looks like a Republican senator from Kansas. He he looks like what Texas wants the entire team to look like, if we're saying, we're picking, like, the racist aspect of it. Like, he kind of looks a little bit like a Bill Embiid, clean cut, white. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't look like a basketball player except for the fact that he's very tall. Yeah. Other than that, you would not, you wouldn't see it coming. What a lottery to be that tall, man. Yeah. If you're that tall, like, let's try a little hard. You just got, you just got to try and you'll probably be all right. A little. Yeah. Yeah. If you're seven foot one and you put a tiny amount of effort into it, that's like three time, three time all star. Yeah. Yeah. I actually saw an article that, claimed jack haley was statistically the worst basketball player of all time which that's harsh why even write that article yeah he's dead now (laughs) yeah he is dead also and he so rodman joins the spurs 
And he probably targeted Jack Haley, so to speak, because Jack Haley looked like such a conservative white dude from Texas. And Rodman and his girlfriend at the time, who knows who that was? I don't think it. they mean Madonna. Uh, Doubtful. Yeah. They invite Jack Haley and his wife out for drinks. And Dennis Rodman takes him to a gay bar. Yeah. Uh, get, wait, what's, who, who sang that song? Uh, God, I can't remember. Oh, man. That's a great song. Take it to a gay, gay bar. bar. Gay bar. That is a, that's a fucking bang. Fuck yeah, man. Gay bars are awesome. Yeah. By, by the way. Yeah, I dated a girl once in our first date. Like, the whole company was going to a gay bar, and I was like, fuck yeah. Fuck That's, yeah, man. Seems you know like what, the perfect place to hit on a woman. You know what you lose is is that weird toxicity Yep. of, of other bars. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, there's not going to be any fights here. Exactly. Like, maybe you'll see a dick that you didn't sign up for, but like, you know what? It's better than seeing a fist fight you didn't want to see. Yeah, as fuck long it. as you're not a homophobic asshole Fuck face yeah it's pretty oh. fucking fun and here's the thing jack haley not a homophobic asshole as it turns out side note going to a gay bar great for compliments yeah it's yeah you'll get to, you'll get a great some. way to feel appreciated yeah you'll get you'll get objectified and it's gonna feel nice yeah when you when you don't get objectified in the real world whoo yeah gay bar that's like t- turning the tides <laughs> Jack Haley, he signs up, man. Yeah, Jack Haley. Here's a quote from Jack Haley. One night, he and his girlfriend asked my wife and I if we wanted to go grab a drink, and he took us to a gay bar. I think he wanted to try to shock me, see how straight and narrow I was. They had male dancers, you know? So I shocked him and slipped the guy a buck in his G-string. Fuck yeah, Jack. Fuck yeah, Jack. And with that, Dennis Rodman and Jack Haley became lifelong friends. Yeah. And Dennis Rodman did on several occasions credit that moment to him and jack haley becoming friends and i remember it being a big story yeah, when he was there. playing yeah yeah i went i was i went i was in my teens i was like, the I was, g-string guy yeah <laughs> I, saw, I have that dollar framed <laughs> in the studio it's, it's autographed crazy. yeah <laughs> here's uh, our first dollar <laughs> it's autographed by jack haley unfortunately <laughs> so yeah he forms a friendship with jack haley that lasts Right up until Jack Haley's life, yeah. Jack Haley dies in 2015 at the age of 51. That's uh, that's a ripe age for an NBA player, by the way. Yeah, 51. That's he uh, posted this on his Facebook page. It's with a very heavy heart that I must bid farewell to one of my best friends, teammate, wingman Jack Haley. He fought against his ailment just as hard as he fought on and off the court. There are some people that can come into our lives that just can't be replaced. Jack Haley is that dude. I love you, bro. I'll never forget you, my brother. And he also posted the cutest picture of him and Jack Haley. Dennis Rodman looks like a... (laughs) Yeah, they're having sex. Uh, Dennis Rodman looks like a cartoon turtle in the picture, for one thing. And then Jack Haley's kissing him on his cheek. It's just adorable. I love it. Yeah. There was a... I'm like, so good riddance to Jack... No, (laughs) No, shout out to Jack Haley's... Uh, family yeah and jack haley comes up again on the next episode as it turns out yeah he does you know who comes up on this episode oh yes i do who might have made some appearances on a previous podcast we did called jose can say cast check that out at unpops.podia.com right now uh support us we're in the middle of a pandemic yeah buy our fucking awesome show buy yeah. six hours of content for three dollars yeah yeah or you can buy 24, 24. hours of content for ten dollars we got a bunch of stuff there what a steal what a steal but anyway anyway here she comes my baby's got a secret madonna take a bow madonna yeah dennis rodman of course in 1993 94 around there dated madonna very briefly well kind of very briefly yeah like like not as brief as you'd think for two people like dennis rodman and madonna to last like in all honesty like if you think about it like dennis rodman and madonna both seem like they'd be people that would be running through partners just because it's such a weird life and it's hard to it's hard to hold that it's hard to hold a relationship together when you're always on international flights and you're booked for 300 days a year. It's fucking hard, man. Yeah. So like, I don't fault when people are like, yeah, they were only together for four months. It's like, well, that 
Yeah, sure. That makes sense. For a long time, he didn't like really talk about the Madonna stuff, which leads me to believe he maybe had an NDA or something. Who knows? But he he just recently has started. Well, 2016. He it's gave a reason. Gave an interview. He had an NDA with Jack Haley about it. Apparently. <laughs> Probably. Oh yeah. Ooh. In 2016, he said this about Madonna during an interview with Graham Bensinger. Whoever the fuck that is. That's him. That's Dennis's voice. So Dennis on Madonna drums. says, I think Dennis Rodman is cool with and I want to meet him. When you see that, what are you thinking? Not a damn thing. Really? I thought it was a joke. Playing it cool. A little she bit. She's chasing me in San Antonio. I, I, every day I go to practice, I said, Dennis, Madonna's keep calling for you. I said, who? Madonna, I said, the singer? He said, whatever. I just kept blowing it off. Kept blowing it off. The next thing you know, she actually showed up. I'm like, okay, what? What, what I said, was jump with Madonna because it's Madonna? No, yep. Madonna was a Madonna. I would. I, would. I, mean, I think Brian and my friend could tell you that, you know, we sat in a pool, do literally in a pool, do in Miami, down the street here in Miami. And we sat outside in the pool, do and looked in, in the ocean. I said, and we, I, I said, what the f are you doing here, Brian? The practice. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about her. I'm like, we have a great cook with Madonna. I, I thought the music sucked. <laughs> you know, all bubble gum and all that bullshit. Like a version. Woo. Great. Cool. Oh, that crap. So I didn't really give a Yes, you did. For more yes. clips from this interview. This yes, you did. You, this, Jose Canseco did the same fucking thing in the story where he's like, I didn't even care. You fucking, you care. He absolutely Jose, cared. Canseco was more like, I was nervous, which I, I understand a little bit more, but Jose Canseco looks like he was just a kid on a train. Yeah. The way he described it. And and Rodman being like, I don't know who cares. I don't care. I don't like her music. I don't care who she is. It's like, you did. You you totally fucking cared. It's and, just been 20 years. So you're saying this because it's been 20 years. And he does have a similar story to Jose Canseco in that he also claims Madonna wanted him to impregnate her. Yeah. that's And that tracks for me as Madonna. It, like, I don't probably disagree with you know when we talk about how they're both not necessarily the most reliable narrators yeah but like neither's madonna yes agreed but like what they're what they're both saying about it either makes me think that a rodman red juiced which of course he did uh but the other thing is like this tracks for somebody who knows what she wants and is like all right i'm i want to have yeah. a baby i don't i don't need you in the life but i do think that we would make a baby that would look good yeah there's really not any harm in that no like her body her choice baby that's she, where we are as society now she, she wants to dig up on the worm she should go for it right and dennis rodman for his part well for one thing he said she offered him 20 million dollars to impregnate her seems high that is yeah you're because you're getting you're you're gonna get the bean too you're, you're not yeah. just gonna get the muscles you're gonna get the the dennis rodman headspace in that child yeah. also yeah, man. Something she, you want to take into account. She likes a she likes a damaged boy. She likes yeah. a meaty damaged boy. She was trying to have a baby Conseco. And then she got Guy Ritchie, which is the anti Conseco. Yeah, who the guy she had her first kid with was a dancer, yeah, right? He was uh he was his he was Latinx. Yeah. Uh I forget where he's from. Sergio something? Yeah. Sergio, no, I was like, Sergio Leone? Nope, that's the director. No. Um, and he's not Dennis Rodman, so yeah. Yeah, who cares? This isn't this isn't that dude cast. Now, here's Dennis Rodman talking about Madonna wanting to get pregnant. And let's see if it still seems like he didn't care. They say you broke up with Madonna because she didn't she didn't want to she you didn't want to get her pregnant. And she wanted to get pregnant. Why you want to oh, get Madonna pregnant? Oh, I tried. I tried over here over by uh, Central Park. She had that, that big uh, three-story place over there. I was I was rolling the dice in uh, Vegas, and um, <laughs> that's a good story. That's one a good story. I was rolling the dice in Vegas, and she's in New York. She calls the next thing you know the paper. I say, "Hey, Dennis, we got a call from Madonna." He just screams it right. I say, "Oh, what the hell with you, man? That's bull crap, right?" So he said, "No, Dennis, you got a call from Madonna." So I say, "Hold the dice, get the calls," and she said. Dennis, you know what? I'm ovulating. I said, what? <laughs> you're, you're ovulating? I said, what is that? I was trying to, trying to f*** with it, right? No, I'm, you know, you know, ovulating. I said, oh, okay, great. So so I, I, I'll be there in five hours. 
So I put the dice down. I said, hold the table. Say, hold uh, the table? That's what I said. Hold the table. And they do that <laughs> Carlos Leon. Carlos Leon. Former personal trainer and actor. Good for him. Right? And that was Dennis Rodman talking about the time he did indeed try to get Madonna pregnant. Yeah. And just didn't work. Not for nothing, but Carlos Leon has a great IMDb and it's better than Dennis Rodman's. <laughs> well, that's not surprising. He's in the Big Lebowski. Oh, wow. And the replacement killers. He's in a lot of stuff. Dennis anyway. Rodman suggested that Carlos Leon probably had a similar financial arrangement with yeah. Madonna. Sure. Which, I mean. That seems probably more, more realistic than the other guys. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, anytime you're connected now to Madonna, you have that financial arrangement. Yeah. Like you're, 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 you're in. You busted a nut in a winning lottery ticket. Yeah, it's 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 like fucking a head of state or something. Yeah, like you now have diplomatic financial immunity. Yeah, people are gonna talk. Yeah, like your business isn't gonna go bankrupt <laughs> if you run a if you run a gym. Madonna's gonna keep that gym going, you know. So he gets to San Antonio. He's his first season goes really well, but uh, he's his off the court shenanigans. He's got all these antics. He's going to gay bars. He's Hightailing around with Madonna. He has flashy hair. He's got, yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? What are you doing with that hair? With all that hair. And as we mentioned earlier, Spurs, very conservative organization. Short for organization. Saves me time when I talk. There it is. And he butts heads a little bit with David Robinson. Like they get along. They don't sure. like hate each other. But Dennis Rodman or David Robinson is very leery david of Robinson dennis rodman tried to convert him that's another way to put it yeah he, he practically <laughs> witnessed at him at a fucking dinner right you like yeah he took rodman to dinner and just straight up tried to convert him to christianity this is a quote from rodman he said this is a type of city where people love to go to church they're not very edgy and he gave me the whole spiel i said i can't live that life no, you can't, Dennis. <laughs> and Dennis Rodman almost certainly can't. cannot. Yeah. And he also made a similar statement about Greg Popovich, who Greg Popovich at the time was the GM for the Spurs. And he's since gone on to be one of the winningest head coaches of the San Antonio Spurs. An interesting shift. And the thing about him now, I've always known Greg Popovich to be super liberal. Yes, like he was very anti-Trump. He's very anti-Trump, which doesn't necessarily mean liberal now. Yeah, that's true. But but a lot of conservatives are very angry that he co-opted their party and poisoned it. Yeah. So like which it's worth being angry about for sure. So he claims Greg Popovich also took some took some issue with his off the court behavior. Here's him talking to Joe Buck's bitch ass about it. The city kind of embracing me. But, um, what's his name? Uh, Popovich? Yeah. He was yeah. a GM now. Yeah, he, he hated me. He hated me. He hated my guts because I, w I wasn't a Bible guy. <laughs> so they, look, they look at me like I'm the devil. I'm like, come oh, because everybody's so like, and I'm like, man, okay, okay, okay. All right, you know, that would be cool. Then I start acting out again, right? Because I'm like, they don't, wanna, they don't want me here. But I'm saying, God damn. I said, my God, man. I said, Am I the same guy? Am I the same guy? Help David Robinson get a re, uh, scoring title and MVP. Am I the same guy that yes. averaged nineteen point three rebounds a game for you? Am nope. I the same guy? We won sixty eight damn games. Nope. Am I that same guy right there? But but you guys don't like me. That's okay. Great yes. trade. So they traded. They traded me to the. Of course, they traded me to the, the damn Bulls. I mean, <laughs> you can't wants say to that. Say fucking <laughs> so trade me to the damn Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> So he's a little off on the numbers. They didn't win 68 games. They won 62 games. And he averaged like 17.3 rebounds. Um, I wish Dennis Rodman was the kind of guy that just took an extra half second before he said a thing. That would be to his benefit for sure. Because he kind of marble mouths it a bit because he's trying to get too much information out too fast. Right. Yeah, you know, but uh, yeah, there you go. I mean, he clearly looks back at this his relationship with the Spurs as being very antagonistic and very unappreciated. 
But like the side thing for me is like, I wouldn't feel unappreciated if they ended up trading you to Chicago. I'd be like, wow, what a present. Yeah. The bulls were like, that was a gift getting yeah. traded to that bulls it's team. Like, it's like when someone would get traded to the Patriots. Yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm going to win a super bowl. Yeah. It was like, yeah, like in that, as a bulls fan at the time, that was 100% the consensus going into the season was, oh, we're going to win a fucking, we're going to win another championship yeah. now because we have Dennis Rodman. Now, it's funny because originally our plan was to do an episode that was about 10 to 15% Spurs based and then rolling over into the Bulls. Right. And then it turns out the Spurs era needs more attention. Yeah, it's it's an interesting it's the most important, era for him. It's the most important era for him, I think. Yeah, it's it's where he becomes the Dennis Rodman that we all know. Yeah. Like by the time he gets to the Bulls, he's already that. Yeah. Like college and then San Antonio. Those are the two formative chunks. Right. And so we see that and and it does deserve a lot more attention. I think the Jack Haley thing is can't be underestimated for how important it was for him to co- continue living his life. Right. And being the person who was and giving him permission to be that sort of bad as I want to be guy. Yeah, he, you know, he found a friend very early, which is the same thing we saw with his time at Southeast Oklahoma State University, go Savages. Uh, He, when he gets there, he immediately falls in with that 12-year-old kid and his family. And as a result- Jack Haley, by the way, 12. Yeah, yeah, people don't realize that. He played for the Spurs at the age of 12. That's why people are like statistically not great. Well, he was a preteen- had just murdered his best friend. So there's that. Lots of parallels. Uh, but yeah, he, and he gets to the Spurs. He meets Jack Haley and things go relatively well that first season. And I, I do, there's something to be said, I think in general about somebody who would appear to be a pearl clutcher being okay with somebody who's as sort of fluid and open. Yeah. As Dennis Rodman. And I think formative to people that have those that identity, the identity seeking behavior that you see with Dennis Rodman, where he's like, well, I need to be more willing to express who I am as a person, even though I'm in the public eye. Like this is, it wasn't, it's not just because everyone thinks that everything he did was just PR. But in between his uh, first and second season with the Spurs, there's a coaching change. There's a lot of shifts. Yeah. Well, the, the, the coaching change is uh, really important. Uh, because that's the same thing we saw in Detroit. Like once that happened, things started deteriorating and he was, as we just heard, he blames the deterioration of his relationship with the Spurs on the fact that Greg Popovich and David Robinson thought he was the devil and wasn't religious enough, but it seems like it's a little more uh, complex than that. Because by the time the eight, the 94 season started, he was already like the Spurs. This is a case of them. Like, like, did they not know what they were getting? Yeah. Because they were up in arms because he was getting a shit ton of technical fouls, uh, was getting all these fines from the league. Uh, in the first season with the Spurs, he received $53,500 in fines and was suspended three times during the regular season and once during the playoffs, but that was for headbutting John Stockton, so it's fine. You got to go low to headbutt John Stockton. Yeah, yeah. Like, I hope he got, maybe that's technical foul because it was technically fun to watch. Like, it's like a three-point stance to get (laughs) get down. (laughs) What is John Stockton, like 5'8"? John Stockton was a little guy. Not a big dude. I Man. hated John Stockton. Brutal in NBA Jam, by the way. Yeah. Speed, defense, crazy. Yeah. Sick passes. Uh, So the Spurs, in between those two seasons, like he's already in trouble a bunch with the league for that. In between those two seasons, they replace head coach John Lucas with a new coach named Bob Hill. Bob Hill. Who, oh, yeah, man. just that name. Oh. You, you know what you're in for. Uh, And... They also, in the offseason, kind of like publicly vowed that they were going to rein Rodman in a little bit. And why, why? 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 Why do you do that? Is like the church group's not okay with it? Because like, I don't know, you seem to be doing okay. 
And so all of this contributes to him being a little unhappy when he gets to training camp. And the first thing that that happens is he's fined $15,000 after showing up late for a preseason game, which that's I guess that's what happened. That's what happened. I guess that's that's what happens. Yeah. That's what happened. That's what's happening. But then during the last preseason game, he was ejected with 222 left in the third quarter after getting his second technical foul. Technicals in the preseason, baby. That's, I mean, that's just fun. That's amazing. That's just, and his second in one game. And in the after he got the first, he threw a bag of ice at his head coach for benching him for getting a technical foul. That's in technically pre, a technical foul. <laughs> in preseason. Mm. That's insane. You're talking about practice. And with that, the Spurs announced that he was suspended indefinitely. And he ends up being suspended for a, by the team for a total of 19 games, dropped his playing time from 79 games and 51 starts the year before to 49 games and 26 starts in 1994-95. That's, re- that's like a dumb move. It really is because Rodman this whole time is still fucking great whenever he plays. Yeah, man. I don't get it. I, yeah, it, and that's the thing. Like when we get into the Bulls episode, like there was literally no better place he could have gone. I, I yeah. honestly feel like if he didn't go to the Bulls, he would have been out of the league within a year or two. The the other thing you got to remember too is that the con- there's a lot of confliction, uh, a lot of conflict in, in how coaches describe him, but like it's pretty much been sort of established that he's one of the most coachable players. It's yeah. just he reminds me a lot of Terrell Owens, who he was a problem off the field all the time, was mm-hmm. a huge distraction, but man, he played Randy Moss is similar. Yeah. Yeah. Although Randy Moss is a bit more country than T.O. Yeah. Oh yeah. And Randy Moss is like, I yeah, just want to no. fish. Yeah. You're like, what? Or I, I think we I don't think we mentioned Allen Iverson, but you said practice. Yeah. Uh, a second ago, and that's a really famous Allen Iverson quote from a press conference yeah. where he missed a practice, and he's like, "Come on, man, practice." He's Who like, cares? "I'm elite. I'm one of the be- three best players in the uh, NBA at that yeah. time." And yeah, so Rodman was a lot of that, and he was honestly one of the first who was like that visible of a problem for teams. But in his case, if you could just put up with that. You are going to get a lot of production out of him and a lot of quality production. You're going to do all right. And, but a lot of teams can't see past that, but like a lot. And I think it's probably an ego thing. A lot of coaches want to be able to control the players underneath them. Yeah. I mean, techniques and fundamentals is what you really want to be coaching and just making sure he doesn't hurt the team. And I understand that sometimes antics on the outside can be a detrimental effect to the team, but clearly that wasn't the case when they were, getting all the wins they were getting and the performance from him. Yeah. And that his final season with the Spurs, they win 62 games, make it all the way to the uh, Western conference finals where they lose to the Houston Rockets. No shame in that. The Houston Rockets were about to win their second straight NBA title. Robert Horry and um, Moses Malone on that team. No, Akeem Olajuwon. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I don't remember who else was on that team. Robert Ory might have been on that team. Because I remember that was like when I was doing that job where I was babysitting the NBA legends. Oh, yeah. It was two championship teams and Robert, two championship players. Like Clyde Drexler was there. Clyde Drexler, Dr. J, Robert Ory, and Moses Malone were there. Oh, yeah. And they were like on two different teams. Yeah. I think Clyde Drexler might have been on that Houston that makes team. Sense, yeah. Yeah, okay, I don't remember. Been. Fuck the Rockets. Who gives like a they, shit? Like they were lucky Jordan retired for a couple yeah, years right. so Hakeem Olajuwon could get his participation trophy yeah uh, exactly championship. yeah but uh so one of the he finally Dennis Rodman finally fights his way back onto the team there's even an incident where he's sitting on the sidelines holding up a towel and he's written I'm sorry please let me play on it that's pretty great yeah and they finally let him back on the team and things go all right for a while. But then in March, 1995, he shows up so late for a game that by the time he got there, it was deep into the second quarter, which that's crazy. Like 
that he claimed he slept through his alarm, which maybe that always blows my like. But what time was the game? Yeah. And like what time? It, I don't know. I don't control people's sleeping patterns, but that, I'm always just like, were you sleeping at 4 p.m.? Yeah, he probably what he probably means is he went to bed at like 10 in the yeah. morning after being up the entire night uh, at a gay bar. Gay bar. And so the the Spurs are like, all right, that's enough. We don't we don't like that. And then and he got on his hog. Then he gets on a fucking motorcycle a few days later and gets in an accident, separates his shoulder out for a month. It's motorcycles to me are always an interesting thing because I'm always like, yeah, I kind of want one of those. And then I see him and I'm like, oh, no, I don't. Yeah. No, that's not how I want to die. There's no roll cage Mm -mm. on a motorcycle. You're just going the speed of a car with none of the accoutrement of a car. Yeah. Fuck that noise. And Especially with all these fucking children te- texting, making TikToks behind ninety thousand dollar <laughs> tank Mercedes tanks in, in L.A. Fuck that. Fuck that. And yeah, this he he manages to make it back from this injury in time for the playoffs. And like I said, they they go to the Western Conference Finals. But after that accident, the Spurs were pretty much done with Dennis Rodman. They're tapping out so much so that. At season's end, they just straight up trade him for Will Purdue. Who? Exactly. They were straight trade for Will Purdue. And don't get me wrong, I remember Will Purdue. Sure, yeah, he's the guy that got you Dennis Rodman. <laughs> yeah, and he uh, he wasn't great. He certainly was no Dennis Rodman. And they straight up traded him for Will Purdue, and I think they got some cash from was, the Bulls. Was too. he good at like a bounce pass? Probably. Well, he looked the part. He looked. He looked like a dude who would be named Will Purdue. I always, whenever I see and cash in a trade, I'm always like, that was a mistake. Anytime yeah. cash is involved in a trade, I'm like, that, that must have been a pretty short sighted trade. Then, yeah, this has gone down in NBA history as one of the most lopsided trades of all time. Yeah, because Dennis Rodman goes on to lots of success and fame and glory with the Chicago Bulls and uh Will Purdue is Will Purdue. It's been great to be Will Purdue to get that information. You're like, fuck <laughs> like, you've been traded from one of the greatest NBA teams of all time to yeah. make it even better. Yeah. And yeah, the thing is at that point, the Bulls, we'll talk about this more on the next episode, obviously, but the Bulls weren't the greatest team. Like Jordan had come back, but they lost in the Eastern Conference Finals to the Orlando Magic. And they needed one extra piece to become great again. Penny Hardaway. Penny fucking Hardaway. Shaq. <laughs> oh, so that's what we're going to talk about on the next episode. Fuck yeah, dude. Dennis Rodman uh, providing me with three of my favorite sport watching years in my entire fucking life. The Chicago Bulls. Second three-peat of the 90s. I was like the NWO attitude era of professional <laughs> wrestling. We are going to talk about some Rodman wrestling Fuck yeah, stuff. Yeah, we are. Oh, we're going to, when we get to the Hollywood stuff, I'm going to be, uh, yeah, this is going to, your episode, your Bulls episode is going to be my Hollywood episode. Yeah. And then we're, I think we're both looking forward to that North Korea episode. Yeah. I like the idea of him and Hulk Hogan going to a gay bar. Oh, I bet Hulk Hogan likes that idea a lot too. Right. If you know what I mean. I love how like when Hulk Hogan used to like spray paint NWO on stuff. I just remember somebody, <laughs> there's a video of Hogan spray painting and it's just the N and someone goes, no Hulkster, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, Hulk Hogan's trash. He's a bad person that I used he's, to look up to. Yeah. Same. Uh, Say your prayers. Take your vitamins. I love Say it. the N word. <laughs> Bang your friend's wife on camera. <laughs> Do steroids, sell out your friends, prevent unionization of labor. <laughs> I loved him when I was a kid. Fucking loved him. And I love it now. Like I know this is a Hulk Hogan podcast. Spoiler alert. We should do that. But like the idea that like, like a 40 year old oily dude made out of pudding skin with like a, who was bald with a skullet uh, just yeah. that, that he appealed to the youth is just, ah, oh, so good. With a weird, like, motorcycle mustache. Yeah. We should definitely talk about him at some point. But 
next episode, Chicago Bulls. There it is. Dennis brum, brum, Rodman. Brum, 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 brum. We're round, round and third, heading for home. Yeah, buddy. Uh, until then, I don't know what we have to plug. We're not... Our I mean, tour plans are on hold. Yeah, check out uh, uh, the NPOPs Patreon if uh, you're please. sneak peeking. Please, if you want to amp it up a little bit, we're not against it. Just, I'd be happy with not even, just just don't don't cancel, baby. Just don't cancel. We will still, we're still going to put out at least an episode a day, Monday through Friday. Still make an exclusive con. You'll still get exclusive bonus episodes. Um, all that shit. If you can uh, check out Gamefully Unemployed, of course, my show Tom and Jeff Watch Batman with Tom Ryman uh, is on there. Uh, also, don't cancel from them. <laughs> Please. We're all on the brink of starvation right now. This is weird. Yeah. So much shit's getting canceled. And uh, we would like to be the voice of that. Yeah. Please. No. Uh, we would like to be the voice of the apocalypse. So please help yeah. us continue making that happen. And also stay safe. Yeah. Uh, check out the uh, Sideshow Sideshow with Jeff May through Sideshow Collectibles every other Tuesday. And uh, once live comedy starts back up, you can check out Mint on Card. The second Friday of every month at Blast from the Past on yeah. Magnolia Burbank. Follow Adam Todd Brown at Adam Todd with one D Don't. Brown on social media, Twitter and Instagram, Facebook. That no, no. Uh, I'm uh, at Hey There Jeffro on both of those. H e y t h e r e j e f f r o. You have been the most wonderful group of people that don't even like sports. You don't even like sports. You don't even like sports. The craziest thing. Bye, bitch. Goodbye, everybody. We love you. 